scripture. Psalms chapter number 119. One verse of scripture. Psalms chapter number 19. The Bible tells us this. Verse number 7 of Psalms 119. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Father, we do bless you today again for this privilege to call upon thee. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. I pray right now, Father, that you'd help us, Lord, around these scriptures for a little while this morning. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. I pray, Father, that you'd help us, God, to... Uh, Lord, glean from the scriptures those things that will help us in these last days that we're living in. Lord, we thank you for all the good singing. We thank you, Lord, for the good fellowship this morning. Now, with God, we ask you for your presence, Lord, and your leadership, Lord, around the scriptures. Pray now, God, you'd help us bless each one that's come this way. Let us leave here rejoicing, knowing that we've heard from heaven today. God, help me. I'm nothing without you. You can say nothing, Lord, except by thy direction. We'll praise you for what you'll do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we mentioned last Sunday, Psalms 119 is the longest, uh, the longest chapter in the Word of God. It's broken down into eight uh, verse sections, and it uh, includes the whole alphabet, and that's the way it goes. The whole Greek alphabet is included. Now, we've taken one portion of this psalm, the first portion of this psalm, and, and I've studied and have gleaned some things out of this one portion of Psalms that I believe will be of great benefit and great help to us. Uh, as we read this scripture, and I'm going to begin reading with verse number one and give you just a few insights into what these uh, verses are saying to us, there's a central thought in this Psalm that I want to get to in just a little bit. Now, it's 10 minutes till 12. It's not, not long, uh, you know, not long, and about 15 minutes after uh, if you'll pray hard, we'll be through. Now, if you don't pray hard, about 25 minutes after, and I'll be through. Amen? But, but listen to me today just for a little while as we understand that this psalm is of great value and great importance. How many of you have read Psalms 119, the whole, the whole chapter? Yeah, I, about what I figured, you go to sleep about through uh, verse 110 or something if you're not careful, but it's a very important psalm. It's got a, it's got a whole lot of meaning to it. The Bible tells us this, First, ver first word in the chapter is a blessing, amen? Because it says blessed or blessed. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the Lord. Blessed means happy. How many of you happy this morning? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Amen. That's about everybody. I saw a few people frowning at me and holding your hands behind your back or sitting on them or something. That's all right. Go through life miserable if you want to. But by the help of God, amen, I'm going to be happy because the Bible says blessed is the man or happy is, are the undefiled without, the word undefiled means without spot in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, friend, if you're going to walk in the way of the Lord, you're going to have to walk clean before God. But if you walk clean before God, you're going to be a blessed man, amen. So what would make us not want to be, I want the blessings of God. I want to be blessed of God. And if I can live close to the Lord and be blessed of God, why in the world would I not want to live close to the Lord? Why would I want to live in the world? Why would I want to live in the pleasure of sin if I can, if I can live happy in the Lord and blessed in the Lord by living close to the Lord? Verse number 2, blessed or blessed are they that keep. You know what the word keep means here? It means to protect or to maintain, to protect or maintain his testimonies. Let me tell you something, what the testimonies of the Lord are, it's the word of God. And his, the Bible says that his testimonies are sure, his testimonies are true, and you and I, to be blessed of God, should do that which we have to, to protect, amen, the word of God, and to protect it in our heart, to protect it in our testimony, and to maintain that in order to be a blessed man. So what do we do? We live close to the Lord. We protect the Word of God. We protect uh, His testimonies and, uh, and His witness. And they seek. What does that word seek mean? It means to pursue or to go after. To pursue or to go after. Now, 
Uh, there's many things that we seek in life. Many seek a career uh, to make a lot of money. Got no problems with that as long as they do what they're supposed to with their tithes. As long as they pay uh, to God what is due. As long as they don't rob God. I say let every man be a millionaire. Amen. How many vote for that? Say amen. Yeah. Not all of us are going to be millionaires, especially me. But listen, I've got no problem with people having all the money they can get as long as they are tithing and doing what's right before the eyes of God. Amen. Have at it. Amen. And, and so we, we see that people pursue many things. Some people it's a career. Some people it's uh, uh, whatever it might be. You know, pleasure in life, maybe sports, whatever. But people pursue something. But we're blessed if we pursue the Lord with our whole heart. Amen. I may have all the money in the world and not pursue God with my whole heart and be of all men most miserable. But I may have a dime in my pocket or two pennies to rub together or nothing, but if I'm pursuing God, if I'm seeking after Him with my whole heart and I'm living close to the Lord, I'm happier than the richest man on planet earth. Amen. Oh, blessed is the man. Verse number 3, They also do no iniquity that walk in his ways. Now, you say, we're preaching. That means we're going to lay a sentence. I'll tell you this, as long as you're walking in the way of the Lord, amen, you find it hard to sin, amen. When do I sin? When I get out of the way of the Lord. But if I'm walking close to God, it's hard for the devil to get at me, amen. If I'm walking close to God, it's hard for temptation to succumb me and to make me uh, you know, fall into that trap as long as I'm walking close to God. But when I sin, it's when I get away from the Lord. Thou hast commanded us, verse 4, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts. What's the precepts of God? It's His Word or His commandments. And what does it tell us how we're to keep them? Diligently, meaning intensively, excessively, and completely. Keep the precepts of God. Keep the Word of God. Verse 5, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Now we get to the uh, verse number 8, which is the meat of our verse that says this, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will praise thee, I will keep thee. Now for a little bit this morning as we understand these scriptures, we see these two words that I want to preach to you for a little while. And this scripture and those two words are, I will. I will. How many of you every day of your life say, I will do something Maybe you do it, or maybe you don't. I will exercise. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Here lately, I have. I did. I, I got a concrete block out and put it out in the middle of my yard, walked around it twice, and told everybody I walked around the block twice. No, I have a, a membership at the gym, and I've started uh, when I can, when I've, you know, when I've got time to go back to the gym. So I will do that. I said I will do it Thursday, and I had to work late, and I didn't. But I will do it again. Day and time, I don't know, but I will do it again. The, we're full of these I will. I will. But when the Bible says something that says I will, it is a promise undeniably either of God or of man, the I will. Sometimes man says, I will, and doesn't. Sometimes the psalmist said, I will, and he didn't. But when God says, I will, believe me, friend, God will. Amen? He will. And we see in the Word of God, we see this, uh, these two words, I will. How many times do you think are in the Scripture? I'll tell you so you don't have to think too hard about it. 1900. And 14 times are, is this phrase, I will, in the Scripture. There's in the Psalms itself, all the book of Psalms, we see I will 183 times, and uh, 168 times of those, if I counted correctly, is by the psalmist, whomever wrote the psalm, and the other 15 times 
is by God. If I count it correctly, now if you don't believe any of that, go back and count them yourself, and you can see. But in this Psalms in particular, 119, we find that these word, two words, I will, are, are spoken by the psalmist 18 times. Now, friend, when God puts it in Scripture 18 times, and in all of the Scripture, uh, 1,900 times, there's got to be some importance to those two words, I will. And when the psalmist in, these, in this uh, chapter 119, when he says, I will, uh, 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 19 times, when he says that, or 18 times, it means something important to us. So I want to give you just a few of them this morning, and we'll be, uh, we'll be through. That's my introduction. When we say, I will, that means that we have determination. Determination. Now, you determined this morning by the grace of God and by the help of God that you were coming to church. If not, every one of us would have listened to the devil and some kind of excuse probably and stayed at the house. But you were determined. And let me say to you this morning, praise the Lord. I'm glad you listened to God instead of the devil. I'm glad you're here. Bless you for being at the house of the Lord today. You were determined to get up and to go to church. Amen. So that determination means something very, very important in our lives. You and I should have some determination in our individual lives concerning the things of God. I am determined to follow the Lord. I am determined to go to church. I am determined to pay that which is due unto the Lord. I am determined by the grace of God and by the help of God to live a life that will be well-pleasing to God. Amen. Y'all agree? Say amen. amen. I will. I am determined by the help of God. Now listen, we as a church, individually, you should be determined to do what God wants you to do. You should be determined to follow God wherever he leads you. Whatever he does, you should be willing and determined that you're going to follow God. There should be some determination to commit to the ways of the Lord. Now, the only way Gabriel's Creek Baptist Church is going to grow is by the commitment of God's people, is by the commitment to God, to the church, that we're going to serve the Lord. And listen, I'm not just talking about more people into the church. I love that. I like that. You would like that. Everybody told me Wednesday night you'd like to see that happen that was here. But listen, spiritually, is as, in, as is important as in growth. I messed that up, but you didn't know what I'm talking about. That's as important in growth as physical growth. So I'm determined that this coming year, I'm going to grow spiritually by the help of God and by the grace of God. I myself, this preacher, is going to grow spiritually in the Lord. By the help of God. If you'll have that same determination and you're determined that you're going to grow in the Lord, that you're going to be committed to God, that you're going to be committed to the house of God, then I'll tell you something, my friend. We as a church will grow spiritually and we as a church will grow physically. So if we ever expect as a church to finish the race and win a prize, there's got to be some goals out there for us as a church. We lined some of those out on Wednesday night, some of the things we'd like to do and accomplish. And I, I you know, and, and, and we'll do those by the help of God, by the commitment of God's people. It cannot be done all by the pastor. It cannot be done by the Sunday school teachers. It cannot be done by the, all by the deacons. It must be a group effort, amen, in determination and commitment that we're going to reach some goals for the church, amen. Y'all with me? Some of you looking at me funny. I, listen, I'm, I'm, I am charged up, amen. I am fired up, amen. I, I, oh, oh, I, I'm just looking for what God's going to do, amen. I'm trying to get it all said so I can get out of the way, amen. But as an individual... And as, a, and as a body of believers, we must have goals set forth in order for us to, to, to win a race or to, uh, to uh, get a prize at the end of life's way. Amen? So that we might take that crown or that prize that we receive as a believer and, and uh, place it at the feet of Jesus, whom the only reason I am what I am is by the grace of God and by the Christ Jesus. Amen? 
uh, there's some goals in my personal life. I'm just going to tell you one of my goals in my personal life is to get rid of some of this extra weight I'm carrying around. Now, that don't embarrass me. That don't bother me. Maybe you'll pray for the preacher that he will healthily lose some of this weight he's carrying around. It ain't sin, but it's a weight that does so easily beset me. You say, well, why are you mentioning that? Why is that kind of go? Because this man right here, he runs a marathon. Ain't that right? You have. How far was it? The last one. Ten, ten miles. <laughs> That's me after a hundred yard dash <laughs> that takes me five minutes to do it. Now you gonna believe this or not, but I was wondering wonder if they've got a wonder if they've got some kind of marathon for overage men. <laughs> and you know what? I want to do that. I'm sure somebody can hook me up. If we have to do one here at the church. For those 55 and older to have a, a, a one mi- 1K marathon. <laughs> I said all that to say this. If you don't ever have any goals, you won't ever win any prizes. You won't ever, you won't ever have any advancements. You won't ever win anything if you don't have some goals set forth out there to win. So as a church, folks, we need to have goals that we can set forth. Now, we say that and we say all of that. These verses, look at us when it says, I will, that means we have some determination to do something for the Lord. Amen. I am determined to pray more. I am determined to read the Word of God more. This is all things that we all should have determination to do. And we say, if we're going to do it, I will. Some people say, I will do something. And it's like a, it's like a burr under their saddle till they get it done. I'm that way in some things. Some things I'm not like it is with everybody else. But we see in this scripture that some things that we should determine in our hearts that we are going to do, and I'll go through them uh, pretty quick. You're praying hard. I'm doing pretty good. Amen. We're having a good time. Say amen. Are we having a good time? Amen. So uh, number ver- uh, verse number 7 tells us, I will praise thee. So number one, I will rejoice. You say, but preacher, I've got all kinds of problems. I've got... Look, I know what problems are. You're not looking at a preacher that has the ease of life any which way you look at it. You're not looking at the preacher that gets to, you know, that gets to golf four times a week and, and hang out with all his buddies and all that. You're looking at a preacher that works. You're looking at a preacher that has problems. You're looking at a preacher, you know, that has that I face the same things you do. But guess what? We should determine in our heart that no matter the circumstances. We're going to rejoice. I will rejoice, the psalmist said. I will rejoice. But what have I got to rejoice for? You're sitting here. You're breathing. Amen. Number one, you're alive. That's right. I will rejoice. There's always something out there to rejoice over. You say, but you preacher, you don't understand my situation. Let me tell you something. For the vast majority of you here this morning, whatever you're going through, you come and talk to me about it, and I promise you I've probably been through it. Me and my wife's been through the meal over the years, but guess what? We're still in church, hallelujah. We're still trying to serve the Lord, and we're rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. My wife, everybody ought to go around there after church, shake her hand, pat her on the back, and say, I don't know how you've done it, but, but, but thank you for being so good to your husband, and thank you for being able to put up with him. That's been one of her burdens in life. A long time ago, she said, I will, and she has. And besides that, I told her if she ever decided to leave me, to go ahead and pack my bags too, because I was going with her. <laughs> Hey, I, my wife, if she's got anything to rejoice over, it's for her faithfulness to me and to the house of God, the church. And friend, if I've got something to be rejoice over and said I will rejoice, it's over my wife. So see, and that's always been, no matter what we've been going through, we've always had each other. Hallelujah. And listen, no matter what you're going through, you've always got your, you've always got your church. 
You've got your family, and if not, you've got the Lord. Amen. I will rejoice. Well, preacher, if you believe all that, I would. I'd sit down right now, and I'll say another word to you. I will rejoice. With uprightness of heart, I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. Jesus gives us gladness rather than sadness. He gives us glory rather than gloom. That's what Jesus is. That's what Jesus does. Number two, in Psalm chapter 119, verse 15, the Bible tells us this. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will meditate. Verse number 48. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments which I have loved. I will meditate in thy statutes. Verse number 78. Let the proud be ashamed for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Meditate means to look intently at, to regard with pleasure, with favor, or with care. Psalmist said, I'm going to reflect. I'm going to meditate. Next time you feel like, you know meditation is something that, that is, is, is strange to the people of God. We think when people say, I'm going to meditate, and I'd show you if I could, that there's somebody sitting down with their legs crossed and folded behind them. Um, or, um, hey, that's strange. But see, we let sometimes we let that take away from us. What it is to meditate on God is to get away with yourself somewhere and sit down and just think on the goodness of God. Amen. The psalmist said, I'm going to reflect. I'm going to meditate on the goodness of God upon his care. And, I, and no matter what the proud do, and, and no matter what they think, I'm going to reflect and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to think on the good things of God. I'm going to meditate on the good things of God. You know what a good thing to do every day is? Is to get your Bible, read a verse of Scripture, one verse of Scripture, memorize that verse of Scripture, write it down where you can read on it, and all through the days talk, take a minute to meditate and to think on those words. Amen. I'll meditate. I'm going to meditate on the things of God. I'm going to meditate on the goodness of God. The Bible says I will meditate. I'm going to take a close look. I'm going to look intently upon the things of the Lord. Then number three, and we're moving right along. I've got about an hour left. Amen. We'll do what we can. Number, Psalm chapter 119, verse 16. I will delight in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Verse number 93. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. The psalmist is saying here, I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember the good things that the Lord has done for me. You know what the devil wants to do to every one of us here this morning is get us to forget what God has done. And if you watch much TV, especially this presidential bull that's going on, you'll forget all the good things of God and you'll get in the flesh and you'll throw something through your TV or some mess. Let me tell you something. Our hope and our things that... that that, that happen to us that are good things are not going to come through the TV. It's not going to come through politics. It's not going to come through the ball games. But the good things of God are going to come through Him. And we need to remember that all that we are, all that we have, all of our being should be centered around God. And remember what God has done for us. The Lord did for me much more than politics could, much more than anything else could and done for me, uh, you know, more than anything else we ought to remember. And the psalmist is saying, I'm going to remember, I'm going to forget not the good things of the Lord that he has bestowed upon me. I don't know how many, have you, how many of you read it about the guy out in uh, Hendersonville, Mills, Mills River, I think, that was working on his car and got killed working on his car. And automatically, I remember back to a time in my life, and you're going to think, well, preacher, hey, this helped me. Hey, man, it helped me. And I was thinking about a time when I was doing something to a vehicle. I was 
putting brakes on a vehicle. Used to, I could do that stuff, but I don't know if I could now or not. Have it got brakes on still? And I, I jacked the car up. Guess what kind of jack I was using? Scissor jack, just what that fellow was using. And uh, I jacked it up, and was I, I was doing something to them brakes. And I shook it like that, you know. It ain't going to fall. <laughs> now listen, I'll never forget this. It's the grace of God that I'm standing before you today. It's by the mercy and the grace of God and I looked in there, and I looked around this way, around that wheel, and you men know what I'm talking about. I don't know if you ladies understand or not. I had the thing jacked up. I looked around on the back side of that wheel. I still don't remember what I was doing, putting brakes or adjusting or something. And so I looked over down in there through the wheel well, through the fender well, and I stuck my head right over that brake disc or that, that brake hub and looked right over there, and I looked in there, and I fiddled around with something, pulled my head out, and bam! Before I got my head stopped moving, that car fell. I believe to this day God had his finger under that thing waiting for my head to come out of there, so I'd go ahead and fall. That jack just slipped out of me. Now, needless to say, I never done that again. But either way, that day I would have never done that again. I'm not going to forget that. I want to remember the good things of God. You say, preacher, that's silly. No, you let it happen to you and tell me how silly it is afterwards. They want a soul around there. I can just imagine my wife driving up and seeing me. That's what that man's wife did. Well, I went out there to check on him and there he lay. Oh, my friend today, we ought to remember there's something in your life right now. Probably you say, preacher, I'd have never told that story. That's kind of stupid of you to do. I guarantee you there's some of you done much worse than that. And you remember why God has blessed you and how God has kept you and how God has, has been good to you. You remember those things. And the Bible says we should dwell on that. We should meditate upon that. We should think on the good things that God has done for us. Then the next time something bad comes along in our life, we can still remember what God's done. Amen. I will remember. I will never forget thy precepts from with them thou hast quickened me. The precepts, we should never forget the word of God, the things that he makes us alive with. Listen, if you're saved with God's grace today, you are alive, amen. You are alive forevermore. You have been quickened by the power of the Spirit of God. And let me tell you something, you're alive today. We should never forget where we were where we would be if it was not for the quickening power of God. The Bible says, And you hath he what? Quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Quickened means to be made alive. And you hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. I will remember. Verse number 32 tells us this, I will run the way of thy commandments when thou hast, shalt enlarge my heart. We ought to run the psalmist here is saying, I will run the way of thy commandments. Hey, we ought, to be in, we ought to enjoy doing the goodness of God, doing the good things of the Lord. We ought to enjoy the commandments of the Lord. We should enjoy doing the things of God. The psalmist said, I'm going to run to what, what's good. I'm going to run to the things of God. I'm not going to run away from it. I'm not going to try to get around it. But I'm going to run to do the good things of the Lord. There shouldn't be nothing dull about serving God. You say, well, preacher, that's just go to church and go home, go to church. That's your, that, hey, listen, that's your doing. I got studied last night, studied this morning, couldn't wait to get to the house of God. Now I'm having a good time. Some of you look at me like he's lost his mind. Leave me alone, I'm having a good time. Hey, man, there no, should be nothing dull about serving God. I put something out there this week. 
that, you know, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm too far through the field to turn back from my plowing, amen? And I believe I'm just going to plow till Jesus comes back. It's the Word of God. And, friend, we ought to be just as happy as we can be to hear the Word of God and to, and to meditate upon the Word of God and to enjoy the good things of the Lord and be happy as a Christian. Oh, happy man that I am, the psalmist said. Now, if everyone ever just smile at me just a minute, I'd feel a whole lot better. And if you put your tongue to the top of your mouth when you smile, it'll feel better. I have no idea if that's true or not, but about 10 of you already tried that to see if it worked. <laughs> Psalms 1, 19, 46, I will speak of thy testimonies. The Bible says I will speak, I will tell of thy testimonies. So I will reveal, number five, I will reveal, or I will speak out of thy testimonies. I had a couple of opportunities this week to tell somebody about the Lord, and I tried my best to get that door a little bit further open to them, and I think I did. Hey, we ought to be anxious to tell somebody that Jesus loves them. Oh, me and my wife, we... Next week's Valentine's Day. I'm, I'm trying to build up something. Amen. <laughs> I love my wife. When I found out, when I found her, boy, that's the best thing in life right at that time. I saw her walking out the door and getting her car to go to work, and I went, whoop, whoop. And I went and I, I went right that day. I'd been fishing. I probably stunk, smelled like fish and looked awful. But I went right to where she's working and I just had to find out if she'd go out with me. You know what she said? Nope. <laughs> so my heart went from <laughs> to <laughs> kill me, will you? I'm dead. I'm done. And then to make a long story short, I won. <laughs> she killed me to be a lady. Uh, it wasn't a long time after that she called me. I told her. She wanted me to go somewhere with her, and I said, why? Well, yeah, I'll think about it. I said, no, what time do I be there? <laughs> See, I hadn't forgot. And I was, I was happy to tell everybody that she had asked me out. And then I agreed, and man, I told everybody, you know, it goes. You know, they said, well, you know, she's the prettiest girl at that church. I said, I know it. <laughs> and I said, you know, that tickled me. To, hey, should we not be more excited to tell people about the one that died for us than we are to tell about some significant other, which my wife is very significant in my life. She is my love. But listen, we ought to be as eager to tell others about Jesus as we are anything in our life. We ought to be willing to tell people that, that Jesus loves them and Jesus cares for them and we ought to be willing to reveal to others this man named Jesus. Amen. Number six, the Bible says, I will rest. Verse number 117, Hold thou me up and I shall be safe and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. How are you going to rest? If God's holding you up, man, you can't do nothing but rest. Amen. Coming to me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Thank God, friend, I'm glad that I can go to God when I'm tired, when I'm weary, when I'm weak, when I feel like that there's nothing ever good going to happen again, but I can go to God, and I can go to Him, and He'll give me rest. Hallelujah. Y'all smile at me again. Amen. God will give me rest when I'm weary. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season ye shall reap if ye faint not. So I'm telling you, friend, this morning to rest in the Lord. The psalmist said, I'm going to rest in Him. Under what, do you all remember the message that Brother, uh, 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 Brother Rudy Smith preached here? Underneath His everlasting arms. Do you remember that message? Listen, friend, when we remember that, there's nothing we can do but rest. 21 after I lied to you, I'm sorry, forgive me. Number seven, I will respect. Oh, 
hold thou me up continually, and I shall be saved, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Do you respect the Lord? Do you respect the Word of God? Do you, you respect the goodness of God? The Bible says that we will respect, the psalmist says, I will respect thy statutes continually. Listen, if you respect the Word of God, Amen. You will want to do what's in these scriptures. Amen. If I respect God, I want to be obedient to His instruction manual. My car says change the oil every 25,000 miles. No. My car says change the oil every 7,500 miles. If I want it to last me a long time, which it better, if I want it to last me a long time, then I better follow the instructions. Amen. If a doctor tells me, son, you better go home and stay off of that ankle, then I better go home and stay off of that ankle. If he tells me I've got a kidney stone, you need to go drink plenty of water, I better go drink plenty of water. Listen, if the Word of God tells me that I'm to live right, live close, serve Him, do His will, love His Bible, amen, I better do that, amen. I will respect the good things of the Lord. Do you respect the Lord enough this morning to obey his word. Do you respect the good things of God? And there's many more of these through the scripture of I wills, and whether we'll get to the rest of them or not, I don't know. I'm through. But listen, friend, we ought to determine in our hearts this year, as faithful February, as we're calling this, we're going to be faithful to the Lord. I will do some things for God this year. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Bless it, I pray. Help us now, Father, that we'd now the altar call, Lord, in such a way, Father, that would be a blessing and pleasing to thee. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Every head, everyone stand, every head bowed, no one looking around.